Hi there Cadillac owners, today in your 2016 Cadillac SRX, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Demco's Stay and Play Duo Supplemental Braking System. And here you can see the main box for our braking system here. This is the operating unit. This is the device that's actually going to pressurize the cylinder that's on the pedal to activate it to pull the brakes. And it's also going to pull vacuum on our brake system here. So we'll also have power assist as well. That's going to give us plenty of stopping power out of this box. And since the inside components has an inertia sensor in it, it allows it to be proportional. So that way, the harder you stop in your motorhome, the harder this system's gonna stop so you can have it evenly matched to have nice, smooth braking operation. That's going to allow you to stop safely, and it's also not gonna wear out any components prematurely. There's five main components you'll need when flat towing your vehicle behind your motorhome. You'll need your tow bar, which is the connection that will connect your motorhome to your vehicle. You'll need your safety cables, which is a supplemental connection in addition to your tow bar. You'll need your base plate, which is the connection point you'll attach your tow bar to on your vehicle. You'll also need your diode wiring, which will take the lighting signals from your motorhome and transfer them to the lights at the back of your vehicle, so people behind you will know your intentions when going down the road. And lastly, you'll need your supplemental braking system, which will apply the brakes in your vehicle when you hit them in your motorhome to help you come to a safe stop. We're now inside, and here you can see that actuating cylinder where it clamps onto our pedal. It has a cord out the back that attaches to an anchor that will allow it to pull the pedal to apply it. You can see the airline tubing here where it comes in to send that pressure from the operating unit outside. If we turn our attention towards the side of our vehicle here, over here we can find our control box, and this is a device that has the inertia sensor inside and allows you to arm and disarm the system. When you're driving it around normally, you wanna make sure it's disarmed in the off position. This way, there's no way the system can activate when you're out running around on the road. When you're ready to flat tow, you want to make sure you switch it on. That arms the system, and now it's going to be looking for those brake signal inputs from the motorhome, as well as monitoring that inertia sensor inside to determine when to properly apply the pedal. You'll also find your sensitivity adjustment located on the side of the box here, where you can determine whether or not uh, how aggressive and when the pedal applies. Included with your kit, you also get a breakaway switch. So in the event of a catastrophic disconnect, the pin would be pulled, and this would activate the braking system to help your vehicle come to a safe stop. And you can see that here when I pull the pin, the pedal's going to apply. Once the pin is reinserted, it will release the pedal. There's also an LED indicator located on the back side of the mirror to let you know when the system's operating. So you can see here that when the pedal's applied, the indicator lights up, letting us know that our system's working. We can monitor this in the rear view camera on our motorhome when we're driving around the road, so we can ensure the whole time that our system's working the way we want it to. We'll begin our installation by mounting all of our major components. The biggest unit is going to be the operating unit, which we've located underneath the hood here. We attached our operating unit directly to the engine cover. To attach it, there's one bolt right here that you'll take out using a T30 Torix, and then the whole cover just pulls off. There are kind of little pegs you might have to just pull. Uh, they're in about the corner area, so once you get to those, just give it a little pull and it'll pop right off those rubber pegs. Once we got it off, we just sat our operating unit here right onto the cover here and then we just marked the holes with a paint stick and then I drilled those out with a quarter inch drill bit and then I did have to supply my own hardware to get it attached. Once we got it all screwed on there though we just reinstalled the cover. Also outside the vehicle we'll need to mount our breakaway switch. We attach this directly to the base plate mounting location on our base plate here. We're using a Roadmaster base plate which does provide an attachment point. Some of the other manufacturers may not but we do have no drill brackets and other brackets here at E-Trailer, so you can get these mounted up pretty much with these. We're now here on the inside of the vehicle, and we did remove a couple of components to make it easier to see on camera, and it is also a lot easier to work. These panels don't necessarily have to come out to do this, but it does make your life a whole lot easier. The panel here on the front actually just pulls off. You will have to pull out on the side trim piece just a little bit to get it to clear when you're pulling it off. So you might want to pull this out, pop it out just a little bit first. Once you get this front piece off, there is another piece that runs across the bottom here, kind of like a kick panel cover. That one has several push pins. One would go like here, here, and there's a couple in the back. And then there's two screws that also hold it in. You can't access those screws until you've pulled off that first cover that we talked about. Once you get those screws out, there are a couple of electrical connectors for the lights that's in that lower panel. So we can disconnect those. I just tuck them up here up top to keep them out of the way. And now we've got tons of room to be able to see and work down here. We mounted the inside controller just to the kick panel here on the left. 
we used the included screws and just ran it right into the plastic there to get that mounted up. On our brake pedal here, we mounted the actuating cylinder, and this was attached by just taking the bolts loose, and there's another plate here that will slide off. We can then take the studs here and our actuating cylinder, slide it over the pedal, put the plate on the other side, and then reinstall the bolts. Now, in most cases, I just use a socket in my hand to tighten these down, but due to the weird shape of this pedal, it does like to kind of slide around a lot, so I did actually get out a, a ratchet, and I put a little bit extra tightness on these to make sure that it doesn't move around. I would still recommend starting with the socket by hand until it gets about as tight as you can get it, and then maybe coming back for an additional turn on each one with a wrench to ensure it's not gonna move around. Out of the back of our cylinder, there's a cable that has an anchor point that will attach to the firewall. We want this to be in a nice straight line to our cylinder here. So straight back from our cylinder, we did cut out some of the insulation there just to the left of where the steering shaft pokes through. And we actually had to cut out just a little bit of that steering shaft boot in order to get a nice clean direct path for our cylinder here. We use the included self-tapping screw to run it right into the sheet metal there just to the left of that opening for our steering shaft. And then the cable there, we did take and pull out most of the slack. You can see here there's just a little bit of slack left in the cable. If we pull it, it makes a little bit of a click, but there's almost no movement on the actual actuating cylinder there. Very minimal movement. That's what we're looking for. And then we'll tighten down the set screw located on top of the anchor. It is kind of hard to see since the set screw, once tightened down, does go pretty much flush. You'll want to use a number four Allen to tighten it down. And I found that when tightening it down, you pretty much want to tighten it until it's about flush with the top, maybe just a hair bit uh, past that. And that's pretty much where you need to be to get good tension on the cable so it won't come loose, but also not too much pressure on the cable to where it's gonna go through and damage and fray the cable. Lastly, we'll mount up our LED indicator. This is gonna stick right here on the back side of the mirror. You wanna make sure you avoid any sensors like the one right here. When you're just sticking this on, just peel off the adhesive backing and stick it into place. The wire then we just poked right up into the headliner, ran it all the way down to the edge of the window. We then pulled back just a little bit here on our A panel to poke the wire in down through there. And then we just tucked it in the weather stripping, going all the way down until we hit the lower kick panel here where we'd mounted our pedal. We actually kind of poke it up uh, in these openings so we can come out right here behind our uh, control unit that we had mounted. So this is our wire here from our LED indicator. There are two wires on it. You'll have a black and a red. The red wire needs to attach to a signal from the brake switch, but unfortunately on our uh, Cadillac here, our SRX, it does not have the correct type of pedal sensor. It's got a pedal position sensor, which doesn't give us the correct signal. So we actually attach this to the blue wire that is from our unit that's mounted outside on the engine cover. The reason we attach it to the blue wire from the unit outside is because the sensor on our pedal is not going to give us an appropriate signal. So if we attach it to that wire, we'll get a signal from the unit that will let us know when it's activating. That'll illuminate our LED so we know that it's working. The black wire is gonna just get a ground source, which it gets from the black wire here off of our control unit. We do wanna make sure we get ground from that black wire because it's only gonna get ground when the system's activated. That way our LED is only gonna work when we're using our braking system and not every time that we press the pedal or anything weird like that. So we just use the quick splice here to attach it there. I did use a small section of the extra blue wire I had cut off from the unit outside just because it's a little bit thicker and easier to quick splice onto the wires than the tiny little ones that you see here coming from the LED. So now that we've got our LED and all of our main components attached, we need to start hooking everything together here. One of the components that we're gonna to use to help us do that is the airline tubing. It actually connects right here to the cylinder. So if you want, you can poke one end in there and the rest we need to feed out into our engine compartment. And you can actually use this as a pull wire to help pull any of your wiring and stuff through that you need to. So we just taped our wires to this pull wire after connecting it to the cylinder here. And then we pulled it through the grommet located just above the electrical connectors and behind the module here on the lower left kick panel area. You will be able to see kind of the large grommet area. I took a drill bit and below all the wiring, I just put a small drill through there. You do want to be careful. You don't want to go too far to potentially hit any components. So just barely pass through it and then you can take a screwdriver or something and poke it through there to help clean it up and get your wires passed through. A little bit of soap and water can help slide through there easier as well. 
Our wires then we pulled up here. This is our airline tubing here. I did wrap it in some conduit here just to help protect our wires. But all of our wires are going to be passing through from the unit inside. So what's going to be passing through, you're going to have a yellow, a green, a white. This is that blue wire here that we had connected to the LED indicator. And then in here we've got a red and a black also. The red and the black are coming from the unit. Now though everything's for the most part is going to be pretty much color for color. We're going to attach the red wire from the inside to the red wire from our operating unit out here and the black wire from inside is also going to connect from the operating unit out here. We just use some heat shrink butt connectors that you can see there. So I do recommend getting a heat shrink butt connector over the ones that come in the kit so that way it will shrink down, keep out moisture, ensuring a long lasting connection. As far as our yellow, green and white wires, those ones will attach to our diodes and it is again it's just color for color. We can see our diode wiring is right here so we can pull these up and here you can see where we've made our connections. We connect the yellow to the yellow wire here and the green to the green wire of our diodes. That way it gets those signals so it knows when we're pressing the brakes so it can activate the system. The white wire does connect to ground. You can connect it to your diode wiring right here if you want to, but there's a ground stud if we go just a little bit further forward right here. So we just attached a ring terminal to it and then went directly to the ground stud to ensure that we were going to get one of the best grounds we could out of our vehicle. Next we need to get power and ground and our breakaway switch wired up. Our breakaway switch wiring we routed up here from the breakaway switch. You're going to have a black and a, an orange wire with a black stripe. Looks like the black stripe on here is really thin. So we're going to take the black wire and that actually connects to the blue wire uh, from our system. If we look down inside of here, here's the blue wire and it's connecting to the black wire from the breakaway switch there. And this is just the blue wire continuing on to the operating unit where it was coming from. This is going inside blue wire to connect to that LED indicator. The orange wire here needs to connect to a power source and so does the brown wire coming from our control unit. So the control unit here, we take the brown wire and the orange wire, we butt connected those together and then I took the rest of the brown wire here and I used that as a continuer to get over towards our battery where we then connected it to the fuse harness that comes in our kit. We can then lift up on the battery tray here to see where we attached our fuse harness. There's just a couple of pins you'll, or little tabs you'll push on the side here to be able to pull this up. And we had put a ring terminal on the other side and then connected it to our power source here right at the battery. That was a 13 millimeter socket to remove the nut and then just tighten it back down after sliding the ring terminal on. Well that'll complete connecting all of the wiring from all of our units. So now let's move on to getting our airline connected. The black line here we know is connected to the cylinder on the inside that we had routed out. We took the rest of this line and we routed it down here, push it next to the fuse box and then it kind of wraps around our battery here underneath our factory wiring and it goes right over to the unit and we just push it into the quick connect there. Now when trimming your hose you do want to make sure you're using hose cutters. We've got them available here at e-trailer and that's going to ensure you get a nice clean square cut so that way it will seal properly. If you just use some side cutters or something like that, it usually deforms the hose and you get some leaks there at the end of the, where it connects to the quick connect. Now we need to tap into the vacuum uh, for our brake booster, which if we follow this line here, that's where this line's going. So you'll already have a check valve in here installed from the factory with the black side toward the unit. We'll need a length of hose that's gonna reach back here. This hose actually cut last, but it's an easy way to follow where we made our connection if we go over. So over here is where the factory brake booster vacuum line is. Here's the sensor right here on the brake booster and here's the line coming out of it. So if we follow our line back here, it'll go right to our vacuum line on the brake booster. This is the brake booster, the sensor coming out of it right here and here's our factory line. So the factory line here is actually in a really good spot for us to be able to just cut it in a few sections to add our components in. So the first thing we did is we came over maybe that's about two and a half inches and we cut that factory line. Again using hose cutters to get us a nice clean cut. We then inserted the T-fitting that comes in our kit into that factory hose there 
And then this is another section of the factory hose. We just put the T right back into that. When our hose then continued on, we went down another about two to two and a half inches and we made another cut. We put the check valve that comes in our kit into place with the black side going towards the engine and the white side going back towards our booster here. And this is just our factory line. It was already connected there. We had just cut it up a couple of sections. We then took the hose that comes in our kit and put it on the T here, the remaining nipple, and run it off over towards our unit there and make our connection. And now an easy way to test it out and verify it's working properly, you can pull your breakaway switch pin and it should activate the system. You do want to keep in mind that you have to have the system turned on with the control box that's installed inside. So let's flip that switch over and then just give her a pull. And we can hear the system activating and we can see our LED indicator here on the mirror so we know the system's turned on. And the brake pedal on the inside is pulled, depressing the brakes. So it looks like everything's working properly. We'll just reinsert the pin. That'll turn our system off. And really at this point, we just need to make some adjustments to it, which we'll do outside on the motorhome because we are going to need a brake signal from it. So we're going to go ahead and put it into flat toe and get it hooked up to the motorhome and we'll make that adjustment. So now that we've got our system installed, we've hooked up to our motorhome and I turned the hazard lights on the motorhome because that's going to be a pulse of brake signals towards our back because your turn signals and brakes all use the same circuitry so it acts as like a brake pulse. So I got those on. As soon as I turn the unit on here, the pedal should activate because of our sensitivity adjustment. We're going to adjust it to where when we're sitting still, because we're not moving right now, that it does not activate the pedal. We only want this pedal to activate when the internal inertia sensor here detects movement and tells it to activate. So here we go. We're going to loosen up the nut here and push upward on the adjustment until it stops. We're then just going to go up, up about an eighth of an inch, not very much, and we're just going to snug that down. That's your good baseline starting point. At this point, you want to just drive your motorhome like you normally would and see how it feels. If it feels like your motor, your vehicle is kind of pushing a little bit when you stop, you may need to push it down just a smidge to make it a little more sensitive to apply a little harder. And if it seems like the brakes are still applying too hard, like you're pulling your vehicle behind you, you may need to go up further to lower that sensitivity. And that completes our installation of Demco's Stay and Play Duo Supplemental Braking System on our 2016 Cadillac SRX.